Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Just Delicious and finally we are back casting. Vague Raconteur is not with me. The reason we haven't been casting is because his PC broke. So we are waiting for some new parts for him to pick up. But um, we are back for this uh, NLG series Sunday EU Cup. We have Chaos Gaming versus Die 4 Gaming. And uh, I've, I think I've seen Die 4 once or twice. But Chaos Gaming, I know I've casted them an awful lot. And... Uh, yeah, I really like their playstyle. I like how they they go about their games. They're very uh, very aggressive, and they they their their picks kind of a uh, kind of show that. So, Nyx Assassin banned out immediately by Die for Gaming, probably the strongest hero in the game at the moment. Um, after the slight nerf to the Tranquils, the slight nerf to Keeper of the Light, Nyx Assassin has really shown to be the powerhouse uh, in in this meta, and hopefully. Uh, hopefully everything will be everything will be uh, sorted out because the meta is getting a little bit stale. We do see these obvious first bans. We see Batrider is one of those as well, and he's going to get banned out by Chaos Gaming. And uh, yeah, heroes like Wisp and Furion and Magnus are the other sort of heroes. But uh, Darkseer as well. They're they're always going to get banned almost immediately because you you just do not want to play against them. They're just absolutely horrible. Uh, taking their time. Die for game, just waiting for this, uh, waiting for this next pick. But yeah, hopefully the stream is okay. I haven't streamed for quite a while, so I'm not entirely Five sure what it is going to be like. Let me just close some of this background stuff so it runs a little smoother. There we go. That should be better. Uh, hopefully we do have sound and everything because I know that Twitch has been bugging out the last few days. Hopefully that's not the case uh, this time. So. And they're taking a very long time to think about this ban. They've ran into their reserve time. I don't think it's really that easy. They're actually going to ban out PL, so they really just don't want that that annoying hero. He can get shut down very easily if you really, really go for him uh, at the start. And really, if you can, if you can uh, control his early game, he he's not the best hero in the world. I mean. There are heroes that that do better with less farm, like Chaos Knight and such, and they can still have a massive impact in the mid game, even if you shut them down just because of their pure damage. Keep of the Light banned out by Chaos Gaming. That lets quite a few options actually go into the first uh, the first pick. We still have Darks here. We still have Magnus. We still have uh, we still have those big heroes, Fury and Wisp as well, are still there if they want to look at those. So uh, yeah. Interesting. What comes through the first uh, first ban? I would have thought that after PL was banned, I, I, the PL ban is surprising. They took a very long time to think about it. They obviously just don't like him. Uh, but I would have thought that Keeper was a better ban, just because without Keeper, PL isn't particularly effective. They're going to pick up Darks here. Darks is one of those heroes. He's always going to be tier one, regardless. He's so versatile. He's so good. He's so so good on that off lane. There's not really much that can stop him. Rubik and Magnus picked up immediately by Chaos Gaming. They know where they want to go. They know what they want to do. Rubik, very, very strong tri lane support. Magnus, obviously, solo mid. Very, very good. Uh, can harass nicely if he comes up against anyone with range with that shockwave. And um, he has a nice escape with the skewer as well. So it's very unlikely that he's going to get ganked. And obviously, his reverse polarity is good at every single stage of the game. Even if it gets very late game, it goes through BKB. He gets that refresher. That's a seven-second stun, maybe on the whole team, if he can pull off a good one. And, uh, yeah, there's a reason that Magnus is, is tier one. He's just uh, he's just ridiculously powerful. So, uh, D4 now thinking about their, uh, their, their second and third picks. Darkseer is the one they've got so far. Um... And the only one they've got so far, actually. So Puck's going to get picked up and Lifestealer. So uh, Puck, solo mid against Magnus, it seems. Puck, very, very good solo mid. Extremely strong. Pro like, one of the greatest tier one mids at the moment with Queen of Pain, you would say. Those two are the two strongest just on a, on pure power level. Lifestealer, very nice carry. Obviously countered a little bit by the Magnus because RP does go through the rage and that's gonna that's gonna detriment him a little bit. But I can imagine he's gonna be hiding inside that puck and they're gonna be getting some uh, some Nyx bombs coming as soon as the puck picks up the blink dagger. So uh, Chaos Gaming now thinking about their last pick, but the puck's gonna be going mid. Darks here will probably be off on the off lane on Life Stealer. We'll just be farming up. So they're really looking for their two supports. Chaos Gaming, they have a lot more options. They have the Rubik and the Magnus. Uh, Rubik. Uh, can can really do a number of things. Obviously, we see him play uh, tri lane support f a, a lot, like almost all the time. But back, tick the clocks back to when he was released a few months 
uh, maybe six months ago, seven months ago, and he would always be played solo mid. He was a solo mid hero, and Kale's Gaming could always, if they really, really needed to, they could switch it up and just put the, Ru uh, the Rubik in solo mid, but the Lone Druid pickup actually just kind of go goes against that, because Lone Druid, it seems, is going to be their off laner, and then Magnus kind of has to go mid. You can't play Magnus on a tri lane, it really doesn't work whatsoever, so that looks like that's the way it's going to be going, and uh, Rubik will be their tri lane support, so running into the next bands, uh, D4 are obviously going to be get banging out Banning out the big carry because uh, Chaos Gaming just they don't they don't have anyone quite yet and uh, actually they go for the Jakira they want to get rid of uh, more tri lane support so they want to make sure Life Stealer can win the tri lane and um, but I do expect some carry bans to come out of then uh, definitely uh, maybe someone like Luna Luna very very strong on the tri lane she's very annoying to deal with she has very high base damage if she gets that level one into her Luna blessing. And she's just an awful, awfully annoying hero. Gyrocopter's another one. They can both farm so fast in the jungle. As soon as they, uh, as soon as they peel off their lane, get into the jungle, they just decimate creep camps. You can't really compare with the amount of farm they get. There's the gyrocopter being banned out by D4, so they they feel that the gyrocopter's a little bit stronger than Luna, and that's probably a good shout actually. A gyrocopter, very very strong hero, exceptional in this uh, in this version, especially with PL already banned out. Chaos Gaming. Just thinking about their bands. They're going to try and get rid of those supports. D4 don't have any of their tri lane supports quite yet. Hence the Shadow Demon ban. Now I expect maybe um, maybe a Leshrac ban or a Bane. There's the Bane. So Bane's going to get uh, going to get taken away. And uh, yeah, D4. Just thinking again. You expect you you do expect them just just to keep banning out as they're doing. Uh, th this is more than likely going to be a carry. They want to make sure that Life Stealer has the best of that lane, has the more carry potential, and can really uh, can really assert his influence in the late game. <clears throat> When heroes like Puck start to fall off, he needs to be the one. He needs to rise to the challenge and go over the top. There's Luna as well, so I called both of those bands, Gyrocopter and Luna. Undying banned out by CG. That's a strange one. Undying's one of the heroes that isn't really played that often anymore. He's kind of fallen off. Uh, people know how to play against Undying. I mean, his tombstone is obviously very, very annoying, but heroes like Gyrocopter and Luna make it so much easier to play against Undying on that tri lane. And even if he's a tank, if you can stun him out of position, he's he's very he's very easy to kill if you can't get off that if you can't get off the queue on two or three heroes. So uh He's still been banned out though, he is still very annoying. Obviously Tombstone makes it very difficult to push into him and it also makes it very easy to push if he can pop one up behind the tower. So uh Undying, banned out, obviously CG just have problems with him. Uh D4 looking for their next pick. It is gonna be a support hero for the live stealer, almost certainly. They need to get those uh they need to get those those support heroes up to make sure they uh, th they can have the best lane for Life Stealer. They need to be going up against so far just a Rubik. So uh, they they really have the pick of the bunch when it comes to support heroes. Obviously, a lot of the strong ones been banned out. Jakiro banned, Nyx banned, Bane, Undying, Shadow Demon, and Keeper. So all of the big supports taken out. But Lina is still there. Very important. Lion is still there as well. If they wanted to go for him. And those two very nice stuns that could uh, that could overlap each other. Leshrac is there as well. If they felt like uh, maybe going for a Leshrac, uh, they're taking a long time though. So this this is a very very difficult choice. They need to get this right. They need to make sure that Life Stealer can farm because Lone Druid in the mid game is going to run over Life Stealer pretty heavily, especially with those entangles. If we can get a good entangle off Life Stealer, is going to be in a lot of trouble. Lion picked up by D4, so they are going to be going with that tri-lane Lion. He is very strong. His stun is very good. It can, if it can catch two or three heroes, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's almost as good as an ultimate, catching two or three heroes in a stun for as long as it lasts. And then being able to hex one immediately after is, uh, is very, very useful. And it's going to make Life Stealer's job just a little bit easier. Being able to catch them up, they have open wounds as well to make sure Lion can get close for the big stun. And Life Stealer can really wail on them with that rage attack speed. So CG have got to be very, very careful. They're still looking for their carry. Sven is still in the pool. If they wanted to maybe go for him, they have Magnus as well. That would be quite a nice pickup. CG have gone for Lina, though. They're going to keep getting their tri lane. Rubik and Lina are going to be the two supports. Their carry is still to be determined, but I expect it is maybe going to be a Sven. That looks like 
the best choice for them so far, especially being able to stack Telekinesis, the big uh, Light Strike Array from Lina, and then the Sven Stun coming over the top. That is, that is a huge amount of burst damage. That is going to destroy Lion if, uh, if they catch him out of position, or even Lifestealer at this early stage. If he doesn't get a Rage off, they can just uh, Chain Stun him to death with the amount they have. In D4, are looking for their last support. They don't really have many options, though, especially ones that they probably want to go for. Uh, this is why we see teams picking up their tri lane so, so quickly, because it's just so difficult to get them. And they actually go for Tidehunter, so Tidehunter could be their last tri lane support. Of course, he can play offline as well if they want a Dark Sewer on there, but it's more than likely going to be Tidehunter. He gives them a little bit more uh, resistance. He is tanky at the beginning of the game. Uh, his Anchor Smash is very good against any right-click sort of carry, especially at the early stage before they can get their BKB. And his Slow, obviously very, very nice as well. And uh, Chaos Gaming, I expect a Sven, but what carry are they going to go for? We know how the rest of their lanes are going to work out. Lone Druid is going to be on the off lane. Magnus is going to be mid. We are just waiting for the last hero. Who's it going to be? They're taking an awful long time. They do have a few options, uh, but as I've said several times, I do probably expect this to be a Sven. It looks like the right pickup. It... it, it it just looks perfect for them if they can get it with the amount of initiation they have and the amount of uh, of lockdown they can put. And um, they would probably win the tri lane if they went for it. There is the Sven. They do go for it. We are going to be seeing Sven versus Lifestealer. But the big Magnus pick is going to make that Sven a bit of an annoyance to deal with. Especially if you can get an empower on him. Uh, he can really start to... Uh, he can really start to take the game to Lifestealer very, very early on. And uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to be running through both teams, obviously, because uh, because Vega isn't here. I'm getting a little bit of lag as the players just uh, as the players just enter the game. And uh, we're going to be seeing Deuce on the line. We're going to be seeing DM. We'll be taking up the tight Hunter. Happy Jack will be on the Lifestealer. De Weird will be taking up the puck. And last but not least, Lord Blub will be on the Dark Sea, flicking over. 2CG, we see Joker will be going solo mid on the Magnus. Tick will be taking up the Rubik. Uh, all the way up, back up to base, actually. We see Yolo Swag will be taking up the Lone Druid. And last but least, Fat and Furious will be on that Sven. And this game is going to be a very, very good game. Joker, obviously, Joker actually hasn't picked up a stout shield, so he feels like he's going to be okay in mid versus Puck. Um, with the amount of uh, harass that Puck can bring out and maybe with the right clicks. He doesn't feel like he needs to get that stout shield early just to protect himself. He feels like he can just take the fight to Puck and uh, and maybe try and go for um, and just get that very, very early bottle. Puck doesn't feel the same way as he has gauntlets and a circlet to make herself a little bit more survivable against the, uh, the Magnus. And you can see that she still only has... 587 HP versus the 606 of Magnus, and that's with a, uh, that's with the gauntlet and the circlet. So she, uh, that that's that's a really good choice. Actually, just to make herself a little bit more survival. She doesn't want to get on the uh, the bad end of a few shock waves and then just feel, uh, just just go down to less than half HP. Because that really does kick her off of the lane pretty severely. Yolo Swag gonna be using this bear for a little bit of scouting and it's probably going to be pulling this creep wave they really want to take it down though they're blocking it as much as they can it's going to be getting the wave and it's probably going to be getting away as well i mean lion had to use the stun he's got it back up in one second are they going to go for it they are tight hunter just go with the gush is the lion stun going to be coming up as well i don't think they're going to i think they're just going to let it go um they don't feel like they can uh, they can kill this bear at this stage and it's just so tanky 700 hp at this early stage, 1400 max. Uh, give it one stout shield and it's almost unkillable. And Lone Druid doing the right thing, getting that bear just to pull the wave up. And he's going to be getting all the farm off of that lane, which is uh, which is very, very nice for him. Uh, last hits and denies we can have a look at. It's, it's, it's very, very early to start looking at this, but... Uh, no reason why not. We can actually see that Magnus is getting uh, is getting beat at this very very early stage by Puck. Of course, it is a very very early stage, but she's three and two versus a uh, one and one. So she's really uh, having a nice nice uh, nice time in mid against him. And she's level two. Magnus has uh, just hit level two, but now she's got phase shift, and that's very important. Magnus couldn't put enough harass on her before phase shift, and now she can dodge those. Uh, Oh, no, she actually completely, she actually missed that one a little bit, maybe a little bit of lag. But um, she can start dodging the shockwaves, which is going to mean an awful lot. Uh, Lord Blub is on this tri lane. He is going to be trying to shut down Fat and Furious' farm as much as possible on this Sven. And you can see Darkseer's, uh, 
the Dux's Dux's Fink does an uh, Iron Shell does an awful lot of damage to him at this early stage. Uh, Lena just right clicking it and auto attacking as much as possible just to get it down to make sure that Sven doesn't take too much damage. And um, seven and three up on Fat and Furious. Compare that to the Life Stealer who is currently on 10 and 1. He's, he's doing very nicely. But he did have an entire lane to himself. So I expect Sven to catch back up now that it gets to this... Uh, now that the lane has got pushed back slightly. So, um, Lone Druid having an okay time. Sat on 3 and 1. Uh, we can compare that to the Darks here, who is <laughs> naught and naught. Uh, you have to say that Lone Druid is doing a much, much better job on that off lane. Darks finally gets the last hit off of his Ion Shell. <coughs> and uh, this battle in mid is going to be important. And it's going to be very interesting to see, especially in the latest, latest stages of this game, whether Magnus can actually keep up with the Puck. Because Puck's uh, harass is going to be much greater than Magnus. He's actually got a bottle now, so that's going to help him a lot. But Puck's nearly got uh, her bottle. So Puck's really doing well. And um, starting with more items, managing to pick up the bottle at probably about the same time as Magnus. Although Magnus, miles ahead on last hits at this stage because of that shockwave. The more levels you get in it, it just makes it so easy to last hit two or three creeps at the same time and get her ass off. Uh, Puck really just uh, really can't do much about it. And um, now that he has the bottle as well, he's just going to be making sure that he keeps his mana up, he keeps denying, and he keeps that spam going onto the Puck. And you can see there's the spam. Puck dodges it, but it's... Uh, but but it's not that concerning for Magnus at this stage. He just wants to try and get as much farm as possible. Get up those very quick early arcane boots. And from there he can start to really uh, to really roam around the map. And start dominating the game with his reverse polarity. So um, even though Puck had the, uh, the better early stages of the, of the lane. She is starting to fall off quite considerably. And uh, Lifestealer actually miles ahead of, uh, of the Sven on farm. 20 and 6 versus 10 and 3. He's pretty much doubling. Uh, Sven gets a few last hits now just to try and pull himself back. But it's really, really not going as nicely as they wanted for Sven. He's getting out last hit quite considerably by the Lifestealer. 10 at this stage, and at this early stage, 10 last hits is a lot. And um, you can see that actually Happy Jack wants to go for his early Hand of Midas. He's picked up Gloves of Haste. So he is going to be rushing Hand of Midas as fast as possible. He needs to pick it up within the next few minutes. So it's just not going to be cost efficient. But he is getting complete free farm. So he feels like he can do whatever he wants down in mid. Three of them try a rotation. But y you can't gank Puck. <laughs> Puck's almost ungankable. Um... Joker does get the regen rune. That's very, very nice. But unless you can chain stun Puck into Oblivion, there's literally no way you are going to be able to get her. And we can see Tick taking a lot of damage off of that uh, off of that orb. And if Puck had any more mana, maybe she would have maybe tried to go for the dive. Didn't feel it was necessary and uh, actually just backed off. So Happy Jack nearly at the uh, nearly at the hand of Midas. Only about 400 away. That's uh, that's a creep wave or two. That's a few more minutes. Of, uh, of farming. He actually missed one there, but that's not the end of the world. And, um, yep, he's nearly got what he needs. If we have a look at the supports, how are they doing? Oh, they actually want to smoke gank. They want to try and go mid. They really want to try and get this Magnus before he hits level 6. Titan to level 3, Lion level 2. I think that's enough to get him, especially seeing that they have the Earth Spike into the Hex and they have the Gush to try and slow him down as well. I think they can get Joker if they go quickly. Joker's nearly level 6. 596 XP. He needs one more creep to get it. Round the back go the two supports. Are they going to go all the way around? They are. Is Joker going to hit level 6 before they get there? He needs one right click. There it is. He gets level 6. Is he going to get his RP? He hasn't quite got it yet. He needs to pick it up because they are going to go around the back to try and get him. Maybe they're not. Oh, they're going to snipe the courier. They're going to get the courier. No, they're not. They're just going to focus on Joker. Joker looks like he could be first blood. Puck pops everything. They all use everything they can. Are they going to be able to get him? One more right click. Will do the job. Gush is up in three. He's bottling up. He really needs to make sure he's survivable. Gush is used on Joker. Do they have quite enough? Puck going around the back. There she goes. One right click. There's the RP that he's picked up. And he gets first blood. Joker turns it around. Hellraiser's here as well. Is he going to go for the light striker raid to maybe try and pick one off? Tick's coming in. 
He does have telekinesis. Lifts up Lion. Here comes the Light Strike Array. No, he doesn't use it. Lion is going to get away. Nice play by the Darks there. Little bit of a fumble, I think, from uh, from Tick and Hellraiser. Maybe not as coordinated as they would have liked. But Joker gets first blood. Massive, massive turnaround by him. It looked like he was going to die. He managed to get the skewer off. One more right click would have killed him. He bottled up to just enough HP. And that was that RP. They just didn't gank him in time. He just managed to hit level 6. Very, very important. Very impressive. Magnus gets the first blood. And uh, he is going to be going back, picking up his arcane boots that he can now afford. And um, actually, he's bought a TP, so he can't quite afford them yet. But he's having a very nice time now. He's sitting at uh, 26 and 4. If we look at Lifestealer, actually, just continuing to farm. Now has his hand of Midas. 36 and 8. We can check the net worth. We can see that he is he's actually very, very far ahead. Even though Magnus managed to draw first blood, he's still about 300 ahead of the Magnus on a <clears throat> on net worth so um he's doing very very well although you have to remember that a lot of that is being soaked up by the hand of Midas so it doesn't really do anything for him it just lets him uh, farm a little bit easier so that's maybe a little bit of a lie for this early stage when we look at net worth um when it when it's uh, when it comes down to important items uh Fat and Furious does have a uh, better farm than Life Stealer just because um just because his items actually impact fights if they want to try and start them. But it doesn't look like they do. They're just content on uh, content on farming. And that's probably not, not, what they was, uh, not what they should be doing. Because Happy Jack is just going to keep farming up like this. And he's got his hand of Midas. So um, he's going to get a lot more farm a lot faster than Fat and Furious is. Uh, they need to start taking the fights. He's level 6 now. They have reverse polarity. Not Well, they have it up right now, actually. It's just come off cooldown. So if they want to try and start something, they absolutely can. Zero being put into Empower by Magnus. So um, Sven's not going to have that insane cleave and bonus damage that Magnus gives him. But it's still it's still a massive, massive fight if they want to try it. I mean, Titan is still level 3. He doesn't have Ravage at all. Puck is level 7 and does have the Dream Coil. So that could be a little bit annoying for them. But I don't think they're going to mind too much if they can get a good RP off. Uh, whether they get Dream Coiled or not. Because uh, they're just going to fight them inside the Dream Coil and absolutely wreck them. And they're just not going to bother walking outside. Uh, Happy Jack has Infest, level 6 now. Uh, still continuing to farm up. He's, he's going to be looking for his boots next. And then maybe going into a Maelstrom, making that Mjolnir smoke up. By CG, they want to try and start something in mid. Joker is there. He has the reverse polarity. Smoke up by Puck as well. Are they going to meet each other? Don't think they are. And um, DM and Deuce plus uh, the Weird on the Puck are going to go all the way round. They want Fat and Furious. They want to get him. The SS has been called. They know that he's. Uh, he knows that they're missing. Is he going to get caught out? The Dream Coil is going to get popped. Ah, oh, Sven walks back in. They're going around the back. They know exactly where he is. Sven is going to drop. It looks like they are going to be picking up their next kill. Is the silence coming out from Puck? There it is. And Sven does fall. Uh, he doesn't even need. He doesn't even use the stun. And an Earth Spike will pick up the last tit. So nice, nice play by uh, by D4 to get back in and manage to pick up a, a kill because they were starting to lag behind very slightly. If we check the XP graph, we can see that uh, the Chaos Gaming are quite far ahead. Actually, they're about uh, they're about tw uh, 1,500 ahead, which at this stage is quite a lot, and they're 1,000 ahead in gold as well. So they're having the better of the lanes, even though you can see that Happy Jack is farming very, very nicely uh, down here. So on 1.4k net worth, about 700 ahead of the Magnus, which at this early stage is a, is a lot. I mean, he's the one that's getting all of the farm for D4. And if we have a look at CG, it's much more spread out. So even though they have uh, a lead in gold, it's more spread out on their heroes, which isn't really what you want at all. You want the carry to be getting all the farm. He's the one that needs it. He's the one that can use it more. Um, and yeah, Happy Jack is definitely fulfilling that role a lot better. Uh, although YOLO Swag on this uh, <clears throat> on this 1v1 lane is doing quite a good job. He's got phase boots up on the bear, plus he has the Orb of Venom as well. So uh, he can start harassing the life stealer an awful lot. And looking in mid, they want to start something on Joker. Puck goes in. There's the Dream Coil. Is he gonna pop the? Uh, is he gonna pop the Silence as well? Now that he's stunned, Silence is surely gonna come out before he skewers. Oh, it was at the same time. Joker is not gonna fall. The Orb comes through, completely misses. Joker gets away. Gets a little bit lucky. Puck didn't use the uh, the silence early enough. It was mid skewer that that Puck silenced, and Magnus gets away. <clears throat> Top lane, 
Fan Furious really wants to try and take that this tower. He's on about 850 gold, so he's going to be looking to make that BKB as soon as he can. And uh, this tower is going to help him a lot. It's going to get him that Ogre Club to start the BKB. He's going to be getting the last tick, almost certainly. There it is. And he's sat on 1300 gold now, so that's, uh, he's doing very, very nicely. Happy Jack down at bottom, just continuing to use the Midas, get some more farm. Now finished up his boots. And eight and 800 gold. So as you can see, he's already about equal with the Sven. And uh, that's the power of Hand of Midas. It pays itself off so, so quickly. He's almost completely paid off the Hand of Midas. Now he's just going to start building up more money from that. And um, is Open Wounds going to come out? No, it's not. He didn't feel like he could, uh, he could go for that and dive the tower. So he's just going to be backing off. 800 gold still on him. 64 and 9 last hits. If we compare that to the Sven, who's on 58 and 15. Uh, they're about equal on last hits. But what is important is that Sven has died. And the Hand of Midas is up on Happy Jack. So uh, that's gonna, that, that farm is going to be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty insane. But I think the thing you have to, you have to remember about uh, Sven is that with, with small amounts of farm, he can still be just as effective as heroes like Lifestealer because he doesn't need all of that farm to be particularly effective he can literally just uh just get a just get a bkb and get a uh get a mask of madness and then just absolutely snowball out of control and really really destroy pretty much the entire team especially with a good rp magnus is the one that makes it happen with the empower I and mean, an extra 50 percent bonus damage on top of the 100 or 200 percent bonus damage from god's strength is, uh, is absolutely nuts and it completely makes up for the fact that he hasn't gone for an early Midas to keep up in farm with Happy Jack who uh, who absolutely has is now sat on 1200 gold he'll be popping the Midas once again just to get a little bit more gold there it is and the uh, net worth he has yeah he's paid off his Midas now so he is, uh, he's paid up his Midas in, in, in finger to Sven, but in goes Puck right into the middle of two of them. Really wants to start something. One right click will bring down the Rubik. Doesn't manage to get it. Joker's on the sidelines. Has RP. Doesn't pull it off. They just back off and massive harassment. Puck actually popped everything. The Dream Coil, the Orb, and the Silence didn't manage to get a kill. That's huge. Now CG can make a push if they want to. They know the Dream Coil isn't up. They know that they can go into them uh, with security and be okay. Sven now has that great cleave, so he's going to be destroying these creeps very, very fast, picking up an awful lot of farm. Needs to get that BKB as soon as possible. He's uh, he's actually doing very nice. He's actually catching up with Lifestealer at this stage. Oh, we can see Dews plus DeWeird and DM really want to try and catch up Fat and Furious, but the War Cry is going to give him enough movement speed to get away. No Blink Dagger bought up yet on the puck. Maybe they want to try something mid against Joker. 30 seconds till Dream Coil, so um, still got quite a while before that's up. Hellraiser, they know that Puck's there. They've spotted him out. Up goes the Observer Ward. But they're not going to do anything with it. They're just going to let the Puck go. They know that they can't, they can't really fight a Puck. It's very, very difficult. Um, we see Joker just hanging around in mid. Has RP up if he wants to try and go for a big skewer and RP combo. He's going to be looking towards building that Blink Dagger uh, next. But he's really fallen off on farm, actually, after picking up those quick arcane boots. He's not been able to get anything quite as fast as that. And Lifestealer going for Armlet. Has the Helm of Iron Will. We'll be looking towards making the, uh, making the rest of it very, very shortly. Is he going to start anything on the bear? No, he's not. Um, he's, he's not being very aggressive. You've got to feel that he could probably push Yolo Swag out of this lane if he just goes for the right clicks and just puts an open wound on, right clicks him a few times uh, with the rage. He can he can really harass him down and make sure he gets out of the lane. Uh, Magnus now has one point in him power, so he's going to be using that on Sven pretty much at every opportunity. Ah, here goes Happy Jack. Now he goes on to Yolo Swag. Is he going to bother with the Infest? No, he's not. As soon as Yolo Swag popped the ulti, Happy Jack thought, oh, that's enough. I'm just going to back out now. I've done enough harassment to him. Um, I'm not going to kill him in bear form, so I'll just walk back and make sure that I don't die. He's picked up Blades of Attack and Gloves of Haste. He's only about 300 off his armlet now, and... As soon as he has that, you have to feel he's going to be going for these dives a lot more than he is at the moment because Armlet is the one he needs. Oh, Dews and DM are waiting around the back. They want Yolo Swag. There's the uh, uh, the open wounds and the gush. There's the stun from Dews. They are going to be getting him. Or are they actually taking an awful lot of damage? In comes Lena. 
Are they going to pick up Yellow Swag? I don't think they are. One more right click will do it. There's the infest kill from Happy Jack. Doesn't feel like he can get Hellraiser as well. But oh, the Lena porting in nearly saved his life down in mid. We see something might be starting. Uh, oh, in goes Magnus with the blink. As she gets caught out by the Dream Coil on the back. Is the silence coming out? I think it might be. There it is. And if they're going to be picking off Joker, there's the pause. Dark is actually disconnected. So the pause are possibly the worst time for De Weird. He's popped the silence, the waning rift. Joker is completely silenced. He's not used the skewer. And D Weird is definitely going to be picking up a kill. I mean, two right clicks will definitely get it. He's only on 78 HP. So it's not going to take a lot to uh, to drop this Magnus at this stage. We may as well have a look around the map and have a look at some items now. Uh, see, what, uh, see what everyone's got. <coughs> and Lena... Well, she's just sitting on her boots of speed. She's, she's got absolutely nothing. But you'd expect that. She's a support. Lord Blub actually decided to go for the Hood of Defiance before the mechanism. So uh, he's not got that teamfight mech, which is which is actually very strange. Especially when you're coming up against... Uh, not a mag... Uh, yeah, a Magnus, sorry. When you're coming up against a Magnus, surely you'd want that, big, that, that mechanism just to give the extra armor and HP regen. Plus, you can pop that mech once the RP's ran out, and you can just almost heal everyone back up to full HP. That's a really nice item, but he decided to go for the Hood of Defiance first. He'll probably be making the mech next, you have to feel. I don't think any of the other supports are going for it. Lion, only with boots. Happy Jack as has finished the armlet. That's very, very important. Just what he needed to do. And DM is going to be picking up the boots on the Tithe now. Still only level 5. Needs to hit that level 6 soon. Needs to be getting that, um, that Ravage up to make sure that he can really influenced the game and uh, Sven has Ogre Club nearly has Mithril Hammer looking towards a very fast BKB hopefully we'll be trying to get it before the 24-25 minute mark and um, you have to say if he keeps farming like this he will certainly have it before then and is where is Darkseer? Darkseer, <laughs> Darkseer is having a little bit of a Little bit of a problem. No communication off of D4. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, he's he's back. Uh, he is back now. So D Weird hopefully will be picking up this kill. Go is called by uh, by CG, and we are going to see them start now. Okay, here we go. Is Puck going to get the kill on Magnus? It looks like it. One more right click. There it is. Puck does pick it off very very easily, and we'll be able to get away. Lord Blub actually turns around, wants to get the Rubik. Rubik massively out of position. It's going to get dropped. By the Darks here. Very nice play. Round the back. Lena has haste. Has hit level 6 as well. Might want to try and go for a kill. Doesn't look like anything's going to start for her. Because all of her D4 are hanging around. And D4 really taking control of this early game. They're, they're really creating a lot of space for Happy Jack to farm. And they're also really shutting down the other lanes. And they're not really doing that much to this fan. They should probably go and, uh, uh, and stop him. He's going to pull all the way back to base. Go and pick up that Mithra Hammer. And uh, start on the recipe for his BKB. As soon as he gets that, you have to feel the team fights are going to start from CG because uh, they definitely have the better of the team fights. A lot of stacking going on by Lena to make sure that Sven gets all the farm uh, that he needs and that he wants. And he's going to be going and picking up that camp very, very shortly. Joker still has RP. Uh, if they wanted to maybe go for a fight, I'd be very surprised if they do, though. I mean, look at how defensive uh, all of D4 are playing. There's really no way that they can get anywhere near them. Happy Jack now has the armlet, and armlet has also been brought up on the bear by Yolo Swag. This is a, a build that we've seen come into prevalence more and more, where where the bear uh, picks up a very very early armlet. Lone Druid buys the the armlet very very early, gives it to the bear, because it doesn't take off any of his HP like on normal heroes. Normal heroes it takes off a, a 40 HP per second, but it does it doesn't with the bear. So the bear can just leave armlet on. Gets the extra damage, gets the extra attack speed, and the extra strength for absolutely no loss. Now Lone Druid coming in mid again. They want to start something. Joker has Blink, has RP. If they can get into the middle of these two and get this big RP off, that's a very, very easy tower. In power being used on the bear. Um, maybe just to go for this tower. I'm surprised they're not just going up onto the high ground and just seeing what they can find. Because even if Puck initiates... They know that Puck doesn't have Blink yet, so they know that they can afford 
Puck to initiate in, because they're not going to have the Blink Silence that's going to hurt Magnus so much as soon as the Blink Dagger's bought up. Maybe they're just waiting for Sven to finish the BKB, but our uh, rotation from all of D4, they do have, they, they're completely smoked up, they want to get YOLO Swag, they're going to be picking him off, the Lion wants to go first, has YOLO Swag noticed? Oh, uh, I think he has. The rest of D4 have actually just peeled off, so the Lion's going to get caught out of position in the mid. But Sven, up in the trees, going to get popped by the other three from D4. But here come the rest of CG to start something. There's the Ravage. In goes Magnus. Does he have RP? Where actually is Magnus? I can't see him. He's not around. He was right in the middle, but he didn't even need to use RP. The big Lena, uh, Lena ult managed to get the kill in the end, and it's a two-for-one trade. And D4... They just split off from each other. Lions stayed in mid. The rest of them went up into the trees, and that's not what they—that's not what they wanted to do. They—they they don't want to split off in that sort of position. It was a—it was a little bit of a, a poor judgment, I think, making a. Uh, making Lion to stay there on his own. I'm not sure what he was doing there, but a Happy Jack takes the tower all by himself. He's now sat on 2k of gold. He is miles ahead of the Sven. About 3,300 gold ahead of the Sven after 19 minutes. His net worth is absolutely insane. He's got 118 last hits. And uh, he got that very, very early hand of Midas. Seeing on 2.3, what is what? what's he going to use it? Uh, what's he going to buy with it, should I say? Um, probably a Maelstrom at this stage. It, it helps uh, It helps against Sven before Sven buys that BKB. Um, he's only about 600 off of it. But it's still a very nice item for the attack speed and that extra proc off the Maelstrom, uh, ma making it into a Mjolnir as well later on in the game. And he actually is just very content on just farming the, uh, farming the creeps in the jungle. And just not spending his money right now. He doesn't really need to. RP is still up on the Magnus. We have every single ult in the game except Ravage up. So um, if they want to try and start a fight. I'm not entirely sure why Lord Blub just popped the pipe. Maybe he thought they were going to try and initiate on him. He popped the pipe way too early. It's already ran out. And now he doesn't have a pipe if they want to go for the engagement. Maybe they saw the pipe was used. I'm not entirely sure. If they have. Then uh, they're going to maybe try something. Magnus scouting the rune. We'll find absolutely nothing because the rune has already been picked up. Uh, Lord Blood does have the wall. If they try and initiate, he's going to be counter initiating with the wall plus vacuum, which is a which is a big big initiation. And we can see, I think they're all just trying to protect Sven, give him as much farm as possible, waiting around in the trees, maybe hoping that uh, that D4 do what they did last time and go in to try and get him. He has BKB up. This is where they want to try and start a fight. But at the same time, Puck buys Blink Dagger. And that's going to be very important. If Puck, ha uh, Puck has that Blink Dagger, Dyer's she can dive in with the waning rift. And hopefully silence that Magnus before he gets the RP off. Then they can try and pick off that Sven. And if they can kill the Sven, Sven's not going to have any impact whatsoever in the fight. He is TPing mid. We are going to see a push come out from CG. All five of them are in mid. We do have the bear there as well. Uh, YOLO swag hanging around. I think Lifestealer knows because Lifestealer is hidden inside Puck. They're going to go for the Puck bomb now that they have BKB. Joker goes in. RP catches four. In comes the Sven around the back. There's the skewer. Ravage turns it around. The Puck as well. And the big bomb coming out from the Nyax. They've killed four. They're going to take out five. They five for one them on the back of an RP. What a fantastic play coming out from D4. CG were just absolutely stranded. They managed to pick off the puck in the uh, RP, but they couldn't bring her down in time. As soon as the three seconds was up, she turned around. She absolutely destroyed them with the Waning Rift, the Orb, and the uh, the big, big Dream Coil. The wall as well popped down by Lord Blub. And of course, the Lifestealer bomb coming out of the puck really caught CG by surprise. And they got team wiped. All for a uh, for a tight hunter who still managed to get the ravage off, and that was a fantastic play by D4 to be able to turn that one around. I was not expecting a Magnus uh, RP plus skewer to go so so badly for CG. It just seemed like they weren't quite ready for the skewer. The skewer came in, pulled all of D4 back, and then all of a sudden. CG's, CG's players started moving forward as if they weren't expecting Magnus to pull them back into them. And they just got slightly out of position by the time they readjusted and, and re realised what was going on. The, uh, the RP had ran out and it was way too late. And D4 
just absolutely wrecked them in that team fight. And um, very surprising that they all fell. I mean, BKB wasn't even used by Fat. Oh, it was actually used by Fat and Fury. So he's only going to have nine seconds instead of ten in the next engagement, which is quite a big deal. It, uh, it reduces the cool the cooldown, but uh, the duration is massively, massively decreased. So unless they can finish the fights fast, which is kind of what they look for anyway, then um, Sven's got to be very careful. Joker picking up the Oblivion stuff. Maybe looking to pick up another as well. Oh, in goes the Waning Rift and the Life Stealer Bomb as well. Fat and Furious pops the PKB, tries to turn it around. Absolutely battering down Happy Jack. There's the RP. Catches a few. Double kill for Joker. Now looking for Happy Jack. Happy Jack manages to pick one off. The Lena Alt manages to get a kill around the back. Puck is still hanging around. Is Puck going to get away from this? Puck is going to be able to get away from this. Maybe not because Yolo Swag is still chasing. Puck has the blink. Puck's going to be getting away. But a failed engagement this time from D4. Darkseer actually disconnects once again. But CG absolutely wrecked that one. After the blink from the Puck. Puck popped absolutely everything. And uh, CG managed to turn it around. The big, big RP caught three again. That's the engagement that they needed. But they lost to Sven once again. He's 0-4-3 at the moment. He has died more than anyone else in this game. And he is the one they need to get all the gold on. All of the farm. And uh, he's only on 132 last hits. We compare it to the live stealers on 139, but he had the hand of Midas early. Plus, he's picked off a few kills. He's 215. And his net worth, absolutely miles ahead of Sven, nearly double. 12k to 6.7k. And um, live stealer actually went for a salt cuirass as opposed, as opposed to Mjolnir. So uh, he's going to be giving his team that extra aura for attack speed. It doesn't really help his team, actually, to be fair, because they don't really need attack speed. The bonus armor is very, very nice, and the armor reduction, of course, very, very good as well. But uh, it, the, the attack speed doesn't really do anything. But, um, yeah, nice fight that time for CG. Did what they needed to do. Turned that one around. They couldn't afford that fight to go badly. The initiation this time came out of D4. And um, it just seems whoever initiates, the other team has such good counter initiation that they just they can't really do anything with it. They, they get the good initiation off. And then after that, they just get it turned around. Because all of a sudden, all of the big alts come out from the other team. And uh, wooden PC called by, by DM on the... Uh, on the on the dark side, who's nearly got his mech, he's only about 200 away from his mech, so that's a that's a big big item. They really could have used that in that fight. That would have uh, that would have really really made the difference. Ravage wasn't even used on Titan, who he didn't even get to before the big RP came out. And uh, if we check out Magnus's items, he has an Oblivion staff. He is looking towards finishing off his uh, his uh, what's it called refresher orb. He's going to be finishing his Refresh Orb. Then he gets a 7 second Reverse Polarity. Uh, which is absolutely nuts. Over 7 seconds in fact. 7.5 seconds of pure stun on anybody that he catches in it. And a few more if they decide to come in <clears throat> once he's used the first one. And if he gets that early he's going to really catch them by surprise. Because Magnus is farming actually quite nicely. He's, uh, he's the second highest farmed hero on on CG's team behind the Lone Druid, but he's only about 100 behind Lone Druid. And what's Lone Druid going to be going for next? He has Armlet. How much money does he have saved up? 1,800. He also has the Phase Boots plus the Orb and Stout Shield. We're going to be going again. Darkseer has reconnected. Oh, and he's immediately disconnected. Oh, I don't believe it. He He's immediately gone. But yeah, Joker's just said that he, he's, he's dead. But Lena gets killed by the creeps. The stun comes out from Dews and the creeps end up killing Lena while she was stood there. That's that's very unfortunate, but uh, it happens sometimes. The stun was lucky not to kill her anyway, so I suppose it all balances itself out. But Dark said he, he reconnected and he immediately left. His He must be having an absolute nightmare with his connection in this game. And um, he has pipe, he nearly has mech, he's going to be looking to get that very soon. But he's so important in these team fights. they absolutely need him. But they need him to get back online, and uh, you see CG getting it. Oh no, not CG, sorry. That's actually D4. D4 getting a little bit agitated by their own uh, by their own f misfortune with with Dota crashes. Uh, Dota crashes so much in this version. Um, I really hope 
really hope they uh, really hope they fix it because it, it it crashes quite a lot and it's it's a little bit of a pain. But Lone Druid's going to keep farming up in the jungle, sat on two k gold at the moment. What is he going to go for? I'm not entirely sure. He could go for maybe a. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe a Radiance. It's a little bit late for a Radiance. He would have got it first item if he could, but he picked up the armlet. So maybe Mjolnir is going to be picked up on Yolo Swag as well. Both of these carries, um, minus the Sven, all of these carries actually do go for Mjolnir at some stage in normal item builds. But Assault Kuras has been preferred by the Lifestealer. And uh, Default is going to be getting a little bit of farm in mid. Really needs to try and get up that, uh, that Blink Dagger as soon as possible. Lord Blub just says that he's very, very sorry for, uh, for, for continually disconnecting. And it's absolutely fine. As long as, as long as the other team don't mind, I don't mind. I'm fine. I can talk through these long pauses. I always find something to say somehow. Um, I'm I'm not entirely sure. But <laughs> Yolo Swag just continuing to farm. The Bears actually got. He's he's doing okay. I mean, with Armlet and Face Boots, the Bear does enough damage at the moment to try and go solo versus Life Stealer. Um, obviously, Life Stealer might have the better of the uh, have the better of the fight, but it's not going to be that. It's not going to be as uh, as disparate as the net worth shows it to be, just because the bear is so ridiculously strong uh, with with very very little items. He has high uh, high strength, high strength gain, and um, yeah, he's very very tanky, Lone Druid. So. Well, Happy Jack is... Happy Jack's just farming. Level 16. We, we can check the levels now, actually. We can see Happy Jack is absolutely miles ahead of the Sven on levels. Level 12 Sven versus level 16 Lifestealer at 26 minutes. That's just something you never want to see. Um, especially if you're on the side of CG. You just don't want these engagements to go bad. They want Sven again. They want to try and take him out. DM's going to be leading the way. Does he have the gush? Yes, he does. Is he going to be able to use it? Oh, the reigning whiff. The massive Nyx bomb. He still manages to pop the BKB. Who's this porting in? No one. He actually decides to uh, change it around. And Sven wastes the stun using it on the puck. Not the person you want to use it on. Happy Jack's going to be picking up the last hit on this tower. And he is starting to get even more farm. He's going to be looking towards that Skull Basher now. Picked up the Belt of Strength. Definitely going to be the choice for him. Round the back. We can see um, a few illusions. I've actually changed what illusions look like on the minimap. That's pretty cool. Uh, they're little. They're not always little dots anymore. Eh, never noticed that. But either way, uh, Joker has RP, has Blink Dagger, Fan Furious now has Empower. They want to try and push down this tower. They have to be very, very careful for the RP. They do still have the uh, the Dream Coil though, and Raining Whift is of course off cooldown. Infest isn't though, so they're not going to be going for the uh, the Nyx bomb. And I think CG know this, so I think they know they can RP and make sure they hit Happy Jack and not have him hiding inside someone else, so he can just pop out once the RP has already been used to get that massive burst damage. And look at Yolo Swag just pushing down this tower. It's the power of Lone Druid can just push the lane while uh, while while the others try and defend. And I expect a big RP to be coming out any second from Joker. If the rest of the team react, no, they're just going to let the f tower drop while uh, Yolo Swag takes this one in mid. Down goes the top tower. Um... Lifestealer manages to get the last hit. Once again, Happy Jack's having a very nice time last hitting these towers. He now has his javelin and his belt of strength. So he's nearly got... He's actually only about 40 off of his Skull Basher. That's going to be very important. Especially against Yolo Swag. Yolo Swag can't deal with a Skull Basher if he gets locked down. He's going to die very, very fast. He'd be okay if he could auto-attack them. And maybe try and fight the Lifestealer. But with a Skull Basher, there's absolutely no way... He can fight him, and a Happy Jack has the Skull Basher, has it sent to him, uh, has it being sent to him now, and he's going to be farming up these ancients very, very quickly, very, very nicely, uh, very, very easily as well. Um, having a look around the map again, Deuce just de warding, making sure that uh, he gets rid of all of these wards coming out from uh, from CG, and he does a good job. He manages to pick it off. Up on the high ground, Joker has the empower. Uh, empowered himself, not going to be looking for the ancients, just going to be going back onto the uh, the lane and just picking off these on lane creeps. Where is Sven? How is Sven's farm going? Because he's oh, oh, he's building up his mask of madness. He's got his morbid mask and a hundred gold. He's just not had a good game at all this time. And this is the we've seen Sven's fall off the meta pretty horribly recently. This is the reason 
Um, the reason is he just cannot contest with them. They're going to get the bear though. They really want him. Happy Jack manages to get it. Gets the last hit. Gets extra gold. And a lone druid's going to have to use up another bear. They only have one bear for this fight. Which is very, very important. Joker on the sidelines looking for the RP. In goes the bear. Going to scout out Happy Jack. They don't really need the RP at this stage. All of D4 back off. They don't want to start it. Oh, in comes Fat and Furious. Pops the PKB. Very nice stun. Coming out from line. Raining whiffed. Not going to be enough. Out comes the Tidehunter roll. And the big wall from Darkseer. Full fall from CG. Magnus couldn't even use RP. The only one alive is Sven. Sven's going to be falling. Puck manages to get away. One more orb will do it. Doesn't even need the orb. Another team wipe. D4. Get a team wipe. And get Roshan. But the Lifestealer died. Actually, they might, they might not be able to go for Roshan. Just because Lifestealer did die in that fight. And the big initiation from D4. It's the Tide Hunter and the Darkseer. That is really ruining CG's game. They cannot deal with the big wall coming out. And the massive Ravage. It is killing all of their players. And leaving only Sven. And Sven on his own just cannot do enough. But they do still have RP. Which is, the, uh, which is an important thing. I mean, if they still have RP up, they can still defend the towers. D4 must know that RP is still up. And um, they don't mind. They're going to keep going. They want this bottom tier too. They're going to be picking it up. Uh, Tide Hunter doesn't have Ravage for under 80 seconds. Has Blink Dagger. That was a big, that was a big, big thing in that fight. Being able to get that Blink Dagger off. Uh, being able to use that <clears throat> to kill, to get in and Ravage all of CG as the reverse polarity was about to get popped. Roshan gets pinged. Do they want it? It doesn't look like it. I think it was Joker pinging it to make sure they're not in there. But they're not in there. They're not going to find anyone. Yolo Swag wants to be the one to go in first. Doesn't have a bear now. That's the problem. He doesn't have a bear for another four seconds. He's going to be able to use it, get it up very, very quickly. Um, they're just going to de-ward down here. Maybe they're looking for Roshan. Maybe they want to go Roshan as well. Uh, Sentry will place up then actually not dewarding that observer. That's a little bit strange uh, Maybe they feel like they they can't quite go for that. Uh, they they they'd rather just uh, Make sure they're safe than deward in a, the in horrible horrible positions where a puck can just jump on you Just immediately uh, harass you down and get the very very easy kill uh, Joker has RP uh, We see Sven has actually popped his god strength it doesn't actually have it for another for another 60 seconds. Oh no, sorry, yeah, 60 seconds now. Um, so I'm not entirely sure why he popped that. Was that to pick up the ancients? I think it was. Yeah, it was to pick up the ancients. He needs more farm. He has more. But he has mask of madness now. But we've seen Sven's pull stuff back, uh, getting triple and ultra kills off a of Magnus RP when it looked like there was absolutely nothing. Sven just needs to be there in the fight, just auto-attacking once the RP gets used. The only time they've had an RP initiation, it caught so many of them. But Sven didn't have the farm to back it up. He didn't have God Strength off cooldown that time either. So he just didn't have anything. He couldn't do it. And, um... And, yeah, I, I uh... I expect him to get more farm very, very, very soon. Uh, as fast as he can, at least, he's going to be popping back down, getting these Ancients, using his Mask of Madness. The bear is just hanging around down at the Roche pit, maybe wants to try and go for the... Maybe they're, maybe they're actually thinking about going for Roshan. They probably could. They have Joker hanging around outside. If they send a hero or two into Roshan, they could pick him up. And if they try the counter-initiation, they are going for Roshan. Because if they try the counter-initiation, Joker is there with the RP to try and catch them. Oh, no, they want Puck. They want Puck instead. They're not going to be able to get her. That was a, that was a little optimistic, being able to pick off a Puck um, on that lane. Just so many escapes. Blink Dagger plus the Orb. And the Phase Shift as well, being able to just run away. And here they go down Roshan. They want to try and start it. The Bear is going to be hanging around, scouting it out. We can see maybe smoke coming out from DM. Now, they don't have Lifestealer with them. They kind of need Lifestealer. Here he comes now. He's infested in the puck. They want to go for the puck bomb. Joker hanging around outside. He has to get a little bit further away to make sure Raining Whiff doesn't hit him. RCG going to be able to pick up the Roshan. Lena's scouted. Lena's got caught. In comes the puck. Manages to silence. Big vacuum. RP not being used. Sven wailing on them out the back. Up goes the uh, the big ravage by Titan to Fan Furious falls after the BKB comes off cooldown. Happy Jack absolutely wrecking them. Manages to pick up another kill. Now on tick. Manages to get a double kill. A 5 for 2 again for D4. And now they are going to get a Roshan. 
and they are playing so incredibly well. The pack initiation is just perfect every time, blinking in, and the silence. Magnus just shouldn't have been that close to the fight. He has a blink dagger. He should have been hanging around somewhere on lane, and then he can skewer and blink in, and make sure he doesn't uh, doesn't get caught out by the reigning whiff when the puck initiates. But he got caught out, and uh, yeah, it it just did not. It just didn't work for him at all. Now Happy Jack picking up some farm at the bottom lane. Sat on 4.5k of gold plus has an Aegis of the Immortal, he can really do whatever he wants. He's so tanky, he doesn't even feel like he needs to turn off his armlet when he's not attacking anything. He's uh, he's just going to walk off. And uh, there goes the armlet, now he's actually going to turn it off. Is he going to finish off a uh, Abyssal Blade? Yes, he does. He has Abyssal Blade. That is huge against Sven. Sven, with the BKB, can now do absolutely nothing against Happy Jack with the Abyssal Blade. As soon as Sven comes in, pops the BKB, he is going to get a massive... Massive one point uh, two second stun through magic immunity in his face, and he is going to drop very, very fast because he's just not survivable enough. He has mom, drum, and black king bar, and that is it. You compare it to Happy Jack, who has abyssal blade, uh, armlet, and assault cuirass, plus an extra one k gold on top of that. He's just so. He's just so much more farmed. What he goes for now, I'm not entirely sure. He's uh, he's gonna keep uh, he's gonna keep going. That was actually a bit of a failed stack attempt from the line, but that's absolutely fine. Everybody gets one, uh, as they say, and they look like they want to try and push out this bottom lane. Infest is up. If he wants to go back into the puck again, looks like he is. If he does, they definitely want to start something. They have nearly all their ultimates. 15 seconds until they have the ravage as well. Is tied with them. Tide is now with them. Happy Jack is definitely going to be infesting uh, very, very soon. There's no doubt about it. Unless maybe he wants to just go straight into the middle of them with this Aegis and really just make sure that the rest of his team don't get caught out. Is he going to go for it? We'll have to see. He's not doing it quite yet. Maybe he doesn't feel like it. He knows no defense is going to be coming out from CG. There's the infest. The Infest is up, and Sheep stick up on Puck as well, so if he gets a good initiation. And there he goes, straight into the middle, wants to try and pick up the Lena. In comes Happy Jack, do they have the RP? No, they don't, because the Double Ravage coming out from the uh, from DM. They don't manage to pick up the RP once again. Fan of Fury is right in the middle. CG's apart, uh, have actually been called by YOLO Swag. They know they can't fight this anymore. A 5 for 0, out come the Disconnects. And it is all over. Fantastic play by D4. This is the problem with Sven right now. He was so good a few weeks ago, but the meta has shifted so hard away from him. Him and Magnus just do not win games anymore. Puck is just such a hard counter. And if you can manage to pick up the uh, Lifestealer as well, you're in such a good position. And as we can see by the end of that game, they just, they just absolutely wrecked them with the amount of farm they were able to pick up. Especially through this Lifestealer, free farm on the bottom lane. Picked up a, four, five, a five minute hand of Midas.